I want to give you guys some wisdom of how to move forward with strength, how to move forward with the truth, how to move forward with your integrity intact, with your backbone intact, how to move forward without compromise in the Christian walk. Because there are so many compromised, cookie cutter, cowardly Christians. And in the Bible, it literally says cowards will not inherit the kingdom of God. God says that his soul is not pleased when his righteous ones shrink back. It doesn't mean God doesn't love you. It doesn't mean that God has forsaken you. It just means you don't know your identity. You don't know who you are. And a lot of the times, whoever you are, you can get into this state. Christianity is not about the natural. And a lot of these churches are very carnal. They're led by carnal leaders. And carnality is led by emotions, led by flesh led by desires like that's what most churches are led by because the bible can be taught in carnality or it can be taught in spirituality so there's a lot of carnal leaders with weak spirits and there's also spiritual people who want to grow they care about the things of the spirit actual edification I just want to edify christians of how to move forward with life because the only life there is is god and you want to move forward in this life with God, not the form of godliness. That's why so many Christians are bound. They're miserable. They're not living in their purposes. It's because they have the form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And the reason the power is denied, and maybe just because of what comes with it, the attack. In reality, it's actually growing and developing you and refining you, and it's the highest form of life. David Hammond was saying, a dead fish goes with the flow. These churches are conforming to the world rather Rather than conforming to the real believers. Because people really don't love Christ. They're not willing to go through what they have to go through. Defend what they have to defend. Or attack what they have to attack. There is things that come with it. Obviously. It says in the scriptures that there's wheats and there's tares inside of churches. And a lot of people pander to the tares rather than the wheat. And if you pander to the wheat, you would get rid of the tares. Rather than pandering to the world. But a lot of these churches have conformed to the world. And it just breeds cowards. It just breeds dead fish who go with the flow. It breeds men who do not have backbones. You want to walk with God, not your own flesh. You can't do much with your own strength. You can't do much by yourself. And a lot of people are in this world by themselves. They're moving around in the natural. They're accumulating money in the natural. They're working in the natural. They're busy in the natural. But in the spirit, they are stagnant. You do not want to be stagnant in the spirit but busy in the natural. You want to be busy in the spirit because spiritual things are the most important, especially with God. When God opened a door for Job, it's because he was deemed ready. There was so much spiritual refining, spiritual work. He went through those trials and tribulations when he lost everything and he was being refined in this spirit. There was deep spiritual work to where God's hands supernaturally moved because of the things taking place in the spirit, which affected the natural. The spiritual things are the most important and to continually keep being spiritually edified, spiritually pruned, spiritually growing, it's difficult. And the reason is difficult because we're called to be fishers of men. And when you fish a man in, you need to edify that man. You need to mature that man and you need to release that man. But a lot of churches, they want to fish, fish, lure. But if they give you what you need, if they edified you, if they equipped you, if they actually did what Christ called them to do, you would wouldn't need them. They're not being a fisher of men, equipping the men and releasing them. They are keeping the bait on the hook and just continually luring, luring. That's all it will ever be. It's very difficult to actually be equipped inside of a church. I think of this scripture and it says that people are ever learning, but not able to come to the knowledge of truth. And that's the day and age we're living in. People are ever learning, but not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You think of churches ever learning bigger words, more confusion. If something's right, it's now wrong because this person wants to be right. They're ever learning. The truth is direct. Once you come to the truth, you don't come to the end, but once you come to the truth, you have no more excuses. Once you come to the truth, you have to pick up your cross and bear your burden. Once you come to the truth, there's no more appeal of just chasing after the wind. It's just important to maintain your back 
backbone. You want to make sure that you're standing firm with God. And these church systems, a lot of fellowships, they effeminize. And it's important that you move forward and surround yourself with strong leaders. It's important that you surround yourself with people who haven't compromised. Because if they have compromised in the last season, they're going to compromise again. People who are compromised now, the people who are accepting of everything now, what about in the future when things crank up? Where are these people going to be? And even in the Christian church, there is people who are bending the knee to the world rather than bending the knee to God. They are conforming themselves to the world. Don't want to offend. Don't want to talk about repentance. I'm going to be light on this subject. And I understand that there's babes in Christ. But as for you, if you are moving on to the meat of the scriptures, just the deeper meteor teachings, the spiritual teachings, the things that actually have depth, the things that will actually give you strength, that will actually carry you through. That's what Paul had and he was saying to the church, I can't even give this to you guys. You guys can't even bear it. And that's how a lot of these churches need to be pacified. They need a rub on the back. They need comfort. They need motivation. They need something that is soothing, something that is pacifying. When you give milk to a baby, they need to suck on the scripture. They need motivation, inspiration. That's what they need. You cannot give meat to a baby or it will choke. You give the truth to these milk drinkers and they will choke. Elijah was in the woods. Listen, if you have to leave these churches and go to the woods and make that your tabernacle, then let it be so. Because God is a God of backbone. It says, my righteous one who shrinks back, his soul has no pleasure in him. You have to understand that fellowship, when you're really walking with God, fellowship comes to you. So when you stand firm, you will have people around you who stand firm. But if you go in environments that are compromising, that are bending the knee, that are cowardly, you will become that and you will just be less effective for God. You will develop itching ears. You will weaken yourself in the spirit. You will dull yourself and you want to get out of those environments. In those environments, you are literally conforming to the world, learning how to bend a knee, how to put aside your faith, how to put aside God and conform. These churches are going to be the first ones to open up the doors to the Antichrist. Oh yeah, just come in. You want to be in right standing with God. Sometimes that means walking alone. You think of Elijah, he was just having fellowship with birds who were dropping off a meal. Whatever you have to do to maintain truth, to maintain a backbone, to maintain your masculinity, take that route. Because when you continually take that route, you will be with God. A lot of people think churches are necessary when churches are not necessary. Jesus said, I will rebuild the temple in three days when he passed away. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees thought it was going to be a physical building, which it wasn't. We are the temples of God. We have the Holy Spirit and we are with God. And you're like, wait, what about fellowship? God is God and God is omnipresent and God is everywhere. God will send you people. Doesn't matter where you are. Elijah was in the middle of nowhere and God sent ravens just to feed him that were specifically for him. A lot of the times when we go to churches, that's not specifically for us, but a lot of the times when we're in the will of God, like Elijah was, God will send something that is directly for us. And to get direct things from God, be directly in the will of God. And the direct will of God is you being in the truth of God, you not compromising with God, you not being cowardly with God, you saying what God wants you to say, you being obedient to what God tells you to do, you walking in the path that God has for you, and you will get so much farther with God. But if you're in a place that fears man more than God or compromises the truth of God and adds in man's doctrine, you are just watering down your relationship with God. And a lot of these church places, a lot of these fellowships will actually just snuff out your oil. I mean, you think of the five foolish virgins who had absolutely no oil and the five virgins who did have oil. Oil is the main thing. Having oil. Let's just be honest. These churches snuff out oil. They're jealous. They have comparison. They do not like fruit. They do not like results. They do not like the glory of God manifested. Why? Because they are men. They are women who are following. Get around real men and women of God and the realer you become, the rarer it will become because the path is narrow. People are like, well, I'm Christian. I'm not going to hell. The scriptures say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Yes, you casted out devils. Yes, you healed the sick, but you were in iniquity. And God's talking about 
Christian. This is just not once saved, always saved. It's just important that you surround yourself with people that are going to pull you to the next place, that are going to pull you to the next level. God is relationship. God is the Holy Spirit with scripture. God is spirit. God is truth. And that's where you want to look. You don't want the form of godliness, but denying the power. And the power is the Holy Spirit. The power is the truth because the truth will set you free. The power is not compromising. The power is walking the narrow path. The power is sticking up for the truth, walking in the truth. The power is not shrinking back. The power is actually not grieving the spirit. The power can be anywhere. As you think of David, he was running through the wilderness while with God. You think of Job, he was in despair with God. You think of uh, Daniel in the lion's den with God. The power is with the man of God who is clean within with the Holy Spirit, with the truth, who has relationship, who has depth, who has realms with God. But to think it's inside of these churches. Back in the day, the power was with Jesus and his 12 disciples who were untrained men who were called by God. You think of Saul persecuting Christians, attacking Christians on his way to Damascus. Boom, called. They had the spirit of God. They had the wisdom of God. That's what the Holy Spirit is. It's understanding. It's knowledge. It's wisdom. It will teach you all things. It will bring everything into remembrance that Christ has taught you. It says you don't need teachers. It will teach you absolutely everything. They had Jesus to teach them, but when Jesus died, he brought his Holy Spirit down, and that's what us believers have received. It will teach you all truths. The Pharisees and Sadducees had no power. They were in their flesh. They were in their emotions. They were in their feelings. Their form of power was raising their voice. Their form of power was head knowledge. The disciples were speaking from the Spirit of God and the Pharisees were speaking from their intellect. A lot of people have head knowledge of scripture, but it's not inside of their heart. A lot of people are going to miss heaven by 16 inches, the head to the heart. These spirits still definitely exist. You think about the disciples or you think of Jesus. His enemy was religious people who were proud, religious people who were jealous, you know, of his miracles, of his healings, of his knowledge, of who he said he was. So when you're a real man, and woman of God, you don't think these spirits still exist of these proud religious leaders of these, uh, I've been to Bible study, I've been to Bible college, who are you? Those spirits still definitely exist. So when you're a real man and woman of God, sometimes you will just leave those places altogether. But you think of Jesus, his enemies were the people in the churches. His enemies were the government. <laughs> and the same with the disciples. Because they had the form of godliness. Oh, I know God. Oh, I know God. I've read the scriptures. A lot of people read the scriptures of God, but they don't know the God it points to. A lot of people study the scriptures, but they don't know the God it points to. They don't have a relationship, but they don't have loyalty, but they don't have depth, but they don't have kingdom principles, but they don't have the spirit of God, but they don't have whoever is faithful with little will be faithful with much. They're not actually obedient to the scriptures. A lot of them are hearers of the word, but not doers of of the word. They can read the word of God, but they're not depositing it into their spirit. A lot of people can read the word of God as Christians and it is foolishness unto them, right? It says the natural man perceiveth not. When you're connected with God, you or you have a relationship with God, the law is to build upon that relationship. The law is to connect you. There's a complete difference of people who follow the spirit of God and people who follow the law of God. There is people who follow the law of God and there's people who follow the spirit of God who chase after the spirit of God and reading the law of God just edifies aligns their spirit of how to act and this is such a difference there is people who study the law which means absolutely nothing because I'm saying you can be stuck stagnant inside of the spirit but busy inside of the natural there are so many religious people who are busy in the natural they got the head knowledge, they're moving around in the natural, but their spirit is stagnant. Their spirit is not equipped. They are a babe in Christ, which means a baby in the spirit. God is looking at your spiritual development, your spiritual equipping, your spiritual maturity. What is being deposited in your spirit? He doesn't care about the natural. Man cares about the natural, right? Man cares about pleasing the flesh. Man cares about his
his emotions, his feelings. And God does not care about those things. God cares about actually developing spiritual permanent changes inside of you that rather than just acting, you are becoming. Because that is God's will is sanctification. What is sanctification? It's spiritual work. Sanctification is all spiritual work. Because understand this, Christ is coming back for a pure and a spotless bride. And you're not going to become that by being disciplined, by following the law, by, you know, dyeing your hair, by doing changes on the outside. No, it has to be actual spiritual changes within where when you stand before God, you are blameless. When you stand before God, you are spotless. You are wrinkle free. There's a parable that Christ uses of the Pharisees who clean the outside of the glass while the inside is dirty and disgusting. And that's like a lot of these churches. On the outside, they have the form of godliness. On the inside, they're not forgiving. They're wrathful. They're angry. They're holding grudges. They have all of these different things on the inside that they don't talk about because they want to appear. They want the form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. You're not going to go nowhere because people who move like that are stagnant in the spirit and busy in the natural. You want to be busy in the spirit and your natural will begin to change the way God wants it to change, right? Because everything takes place in the spirit before there is a physical manifestation. Think of God who is spirit. He said, let there be light. He said it from his spirit with his word speaking from his spirit and there was a manifestation in the natural and even people in the world they do manifest but speaking the word of God from your spirit the promises of God or asking it says whoever asks they shall receive knock and you shall find it says you do not have because you do not ask like using your spirit using your words brings forth a physical manifestation. So the spiritual things of God are more important because the spirit brings forth change in the natural. And God is like, I do the spiritual first before there's anything that's going to manifest in the natural. So a lot of these churches are natural based. They teach to the natural man and they go absolutely nowhere and they're never going to go anywhere because God is like, okay, I need to equip the spirit. I'm waiting for spiritual transformation for Pruning because that is the kingdom of God. It's a spiritual kingdom and Christ is a spiritual king. He's not a physical king. That's why Israel, that's why they rejected him because they're like, no, we need a physical king. We want to be like everybody else, but that's not who Christ is. He has a spiritual kingdom and you advancing in his spiritual kingdom, you need to pass tests in the spirit. You need to spiritually be equipped. You need to spiritually be developed. All of it is spiritual spiritual. None of it is natural. And that's why these churches, they go nowhere. Christians go nowhere. They're miserable because they're not actually being equipped. They're being sit in a pew for the rest of their lives. The whole Bible is spiritual principles. The fruits of the spirit, patience, long suffering, love, all of these things need to be developed inside of the spirit. Humility. It says whoever humbles themselves will be exalted in due time. Humility comes from the spirit. It doesn't come from the intellect. The fruits of the spirit come from the spirit. It doesn't come from the intellect. All of these things that God is looking for comes from the spirit. And obviously he wants us to renew our mind, but spiritual things are so much more important. That spiritual things are spiritually discerned. It's called equipping the saints. Are you even being equipped? A lot of people inside of these churches, they're being taught carnal teaching teachings, but they think they're being taught spiritual teachings. It's not. It's carnal. And what is carnal? It's based upon the flesh. It's based upon the emotions. It's based upon the feelings. It's based upon stories. It's based upon life experience, which yes, give a testimony, but it's not even like the truth of God. It's carnality. Move where you are equipped. Move where you're growing in the spirit, expanding in the spirit, stretched in the spirit, edified in the spirit. Move Move in that direction. Think of all of the people inside of the Bible when they were really being grown, when they were really being tested, when God was really working on them, when God was doing his deepest work. It wasn't in churches. <laughs> you think of David when God was really preparing him, when God was really getting him ready, when God was really equipping him, actually equipping him, getting him prepared. He was in the
the wilderness. He was in the cave. He was trusting. He was believing. His faith was being tested. He was down. He was up. When Daniel was getting his faith tested, when he was learning to trust God, when he was about to be vindicated, you know, vindication comes from the Lord. Be silent and the Lord will fight for you. He was in a lion's den. Or you even think of Job when he was really being tested, when God was in heaven, in the courts of heaven with Satan saying, go test Job. He took everything. He was in the wilderness. The most growth that you will ever go through is in the will of God. And the will of God is chasing after the spirit of God, being obedient to the spirit of God, following the steps of God and walking in that direction. It's not a church building. A lot of these places will literally just stagnate you. As time progresses, a lot of these buildings are going to be compromised. A lot of these buildings are conforming to the world. A lot of these buildings are going to say yes, daddy, to the antichrist. It says many are called, few are chosen, okay? It's just important that you walk in the spirit so you actually progress, so you actually move with God, not move in the natural while ignoring the spirit of God because that's the most important thing. Think of Abraham. His natural was, his family was worshiping idols, was worshiping false gods in the natural. If Abraham was a modern day Christian, he would be lost. He would be stuck. He would be stagnant. He wouldn't have faith. But Abraham was a spiritual man and God spoke to him. He didn't even know who God was. Just some other foreign God. He's like, what is this voice? Because he heard that still small voice because he was listening to his spirit and it led him to leave his family and chase after a promised land. I don't know if this is real, but he was following the steps. He was following the spirit. He was following this still small voice. And that's what you want to follow because that's where God is. God is a still small voice. You think of Elijah where there was earthquakes, there was thundering, there was fire, but God presented himself as a still small voice. God is not in the natural things. Yes, he can send you destiny helpers. He will send you people on your path, but just because it has the form of godliness doesn't mean God is in it. God is where God is and you need to align yourself with the spirit of God and follow the spirit and follow the still small voice and that's where God will be. You need to really check yourself of am I chasing after things that have the form of godliness or am I actually chasing God? Because I'm telling you, you could be completely wasting your life, wasting your time and there's many Christians who are and that's just the honesty. Are you chasing the form of godliness or are you chasing God? Because I'm sure when King David was actually chasing after God, was actually in the will of God, running through these caves running away from Saul, doing all of these different things. He was with God. He was in the will of God. He was chasing after God. And I'm pretty sure there was Christians in that day and age who were going to church every Sunday and be like, oh my God, look at this guy. Like, what is he doing? While those Christians died inside of those churches, while those Christians died stagnant in the spirit, not fulfilling anything that God has called them to do because they have never been equipped because they had itchy ears. They were in their flesh. They were in their emotions. They just died. And King David was in the right direction. You know, the people who were chasing the form of godliness were saying, Job, you probably sinned when Job was in the will of God. No, I never sinned. You know, I never went against God. Why is this happening to me? But Job's friend were like, no, you definitely sinned. Job was in the will, was following God. And there's two differences. There's you're in the will of God. Obviously, you don't know everything about the will of God, right? There's certain things you just don't know why they happen. You can't obviously discern the full will of God, but he is a lamp to your feet. You do have direction and you do have that still small voice like Elijah has scriptures say that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, right? Many people are being wrapped in the flesh. They're giving into their flesh. They're giving into their emotions. They're giving into their feelings and they're suppressing their spirits. But the spirit is the GPS. The spirit is the navigation, right? It's the navigation that Abraham used. It's the navigation that Job used to endure and get through what he was going through. It was the navigation that David used to trust God when he was in the caves or being chased. It's the navigation that real men and women of God use to endure, but also to have faith and to have trust because faith is the substance of things not seen, meaning oh, I don't see this. But I have faith. I see beyond the natural. Abraham seen beyond the natural. A promised land where, you know, we are under this oppressive rulership. This land sucks. You know, my family is worshiping false gods. Promised land where? That's the spirit kicking in of I got faith. I'm following the spirit. Where do I go? Go in this direction. Who? Where? 
God, speak to me. Hello. Yes, it's important to renew our minds, but you need both. You need the spirit of God and you need uh, a renewed mind. If you just have the spirit, you will blow up. If you just have the word, you will dry up. But if you have both, you will grow up. But you need the word of God. So it's a lamp to the spirit's feet. If you have the Holy Spirit, that's great because that will prune you. It will refine you. It will convict you. It will sanctify you. It will grow you. But you need the word of God. I need that lamp to my feet. I need to know what God wants me to do, what he doesn't want me to do, how he wants me to treat this person, how he doesn't want me to treat that person, how he wants me to do this, do that. The spirit is navigation. The spirit is pruning. The spirit is sanctifying. The spirit is making you more like Christ. But the word is that filter. The word is the lamp to your feet. But anyways, I just wanted to make this video and I will see you guys in the next one. I'm a man who will not conform. The presence of these angels got me feeling warm. This flesh may age, but my spirit's been reborn. Lord, I can feel it in the air. The veil's been torn. Spirit's transformed. This battle's not mine. It belongs to the Lord. Basking in his presence, knees grounded to the floor. If you ask what I need is God and nothing more. Overcomer, I'm not a runner Perfecting my vessel, I'm never going under We don't bow to Baal or any false gods We only bow to Jai, boy, your soul's robbed Better get correct and get your soul